Hi, I'm Connie, and this is From Chaos to Peace with Connie, where I explore, sometimes solo and often with a guest, how a few minutes a day can keep the chaos away. And with chaos, I'm talking about the physical, digital, social, financial, mental, emotional, and spiritual clutter that can accumulate in our life. Well, hello, my friend. Welcome back to the podcast. How are you doing? Thank you so much for allowing me back into your ears. And if this is your very first time here, a very, very warm welcome to you too. I'm so honored that you're checking out my podcast. This is episode number 132 of the From Chaos to Peace podcast, where a few minutes a day keep the chaos away and where you learn why I say clearing clutter is self-love. This is actually a rewind or a replay or however you want to call it of episode number three of the podcast. I had quite an increase in downloads of the podcast over the past few weeks and of course most New people don't scroll all the way down and start at episode one. But because this topic is one of my most important messages and an important concept of my work and how I help my clients with clutter, I felt I needed to republish this episode. Clutter has so many negative effects on us, on our health, and in particular, our stress levels. This is backed by science and several studies. Clearing the clutter is therefore really an act of self-love and self-care, and it is a thoughtful and powerful approach of self-discovery and self-development. If you're following me on social media, you may have noticed that I basically have no before and after photos. I also have no posts with pouring your food into different containers and labeling all these containers then with fancy labels. This might really look pretty, but is not getting to the root of someone's problem with clutter or why clutter accumulates in the first place. Pretty containers, pretty labels, etc. just keep you busy treating the symptoms instead of getting to the root of your problem. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive into this episode called Why I Say Clearing Clutter is Self-Love, which was originally published as episode number three, Decluttering is Self-Love, on February 24th, 2020. That was before the pandemic, my friend. It feels like a lifetime ago. Anyways, I cut out the intro so we can dive right in. Here we go. So the title of this episode is Why I Say Decluttering is Self-Love. And I actually coined this phrase for the first time three years ago. It all started with our very first decluttering challenge that my friend Vicky McLeod and I co-host every February since 2018. This four-week program we run intentionally during the month of February, the month of love, and we focus as a community on the clutter in our lives. But so again, why do I call it decluttering is self-love? Well, because clutter actually makes you feel stressed, overwhelmed, sidetracked, stuck, heavy, sluggish, uninspired, unmotivated, and sometimes even depressed. And when your environment looks bad, you feel bad. Let me say this again so it really sinks in. When your environment looks bad, you feel bad. And then on top of it, the dust that is trapped by clutter affects the quality of the air in your home and in your office. And in more extreme cases, the dust can lead to mold and bacteria. These are, of course, health risks you're exposing yourself to, especially if you or your family members are prone to allergies or asthma. And if we just stay with the dirt and the dust for a little bit longer, Tidy, clutter-free, and organized spaces are so much easier to get clean and keep clean. And let's be honest, most of us, cleaning is not a favorite activity, and it's more a necessary chore. So less clutter also means less cleaning, and where we save time cleaning, we then can in turn use that time for something that is more important to us. And if that's not self-love, then I don't know what is. So living a clutter-free and organized life really helps us save time by making cleaning easier and faster, but it also helps us feel less stressed and overwhelmed. 
You don't get sidetracked that easily either. By creating space in your outer environment, you can focus more on what matters to you. And it's not just me saying these things. More and more scientific studies support these perspectives, by the way. For example, in a study from 2012 and a subsequent book that they wrote about life at home in the 21st century, researchers at the University of California, Los Angeles, observed 32 middle-class Los Angeles families and found that stress hormones spike during time spent dealing with belongings. And then the researchers at the Princeton University Neuroscience Institute published a report titled Interactions of Top-Down and Bottom-Up Mechanisms in Human Visual Cortex. <laughs> what a title. And, came to the con and they came to the conclusion that a cluttered environment restricts our ability to focus. The clutter and chaos also limits the brain's ability to process information. So we're actually making life harder for our brain and, and for us. With all this stress, we don't need a harder life. No, we need an easier life. And a third example is Stanford, who published an article on how less clutter can reduce stress. And I have all the links in the show notes, by the way, so you can go and check it out. Okay, now, but even with so many good reasons to declutter and even research that supports the benefits, why is it then so difficult? I feel it is because we don't approach it with the right mindset. We think it's a one-time event or a fad that will go away again. Another reason is that we are not aware of how much clutter is weighing us down until we let go of some of it, and then we experience the difference in our body. So that's why my mission is to show you an approach and a way of decluttering that ultimately becomes simply the way you live your life. And it's not about purging minimalism or becoming overwhelmed with tasks or overwhelmed with decluttering. That would be really counterproductive, right? Self-care and self-love are important. It's focusing on oneself and personal nurturing. But then again, self-care is so much more than just bubble baths, massages and other special treatments. I feel it's just as much, if not more, creating an environment that supports you in a very practical way and it brings more ease, freedom and joy in your life. And that's my aim with this podcast. It is looking after ourselves, loving ourselves. In other words, self-care and self-love. Hence the title, Decluttering is Self-Love. Okay, let's go a little bit deeper. Decluttering, organizing and getting control of the stuff in your life also gives you a sense of accomplishment and well-being. And when you let go of things that have no more room in your life, you will physically feel the release in your body. A weight will lift off your shoulder, I promise you. You will feel lighter. You will feel like you are in the flow. And this will lead to feeling more energized, more optimistic and happier. Back in 2018, when we did this challenge for the first time, Vicky actually coined the phrase, decluttering will give you and your future self elbow room. That is room to grow, discover, evolve and change all at the pace of your own wisdom. And that's what I feel decluttering really helps us with to find ourselves and to figure out who we are, to let go of the things and thoughts that have nothing to do anymore with who we are. Maybe they never had anything to do with who we were in the first place. So in short, we are shaped by what we surround ourselves with. And the question is really, how do you want to be shaped? We should only surround ourselves with what tells the story of who we are right now, not who we used to be. So decluttering is really a thoughtful and powerful approach of self-development. At least that's how I see it. So what you want to do is look at what stage of life you're at and what is your vision for you and your family and how to live in your home. There's no right or wrong. A young family, for example, with small children will have very different requirements than empty nesters or singles or couples without children are different again. So that's what I do when I work with clients. We figure out first what stage of life are they at what are their requirements for this stage? And what is it trying to emerge in their life that they might need to make room for? We craft a vision together then for a perfectly functioning home for the stage of life that they're in right now. So ask yourself, how would your ideal home or office space look like? How would it function on a day-to-day -day basis? How would it support your lifestyle, your hobbies, your needs? And what about your future self? Remember, we want to make elbow room for our future self as well. 
These are big questions that you don't have to and most likely can't answer right here and right now. But think about them. Take time to really think about these questions. Maybe even journal around them. Another approach, a little bit more hands-on approach would be if you would declutter a little bit. Maybe your sock drawer. <laughs> I always go to the sock drawer or underwear or cutlery in your kitchen. Just something. And then while you're doing this, think about what would be ideal? How would you want to live? How would you want your kitchen to, to work on a day-to-day -day basis? Or how would you like your office to function on a day-to-day -day basis? It's really listening and figuring out what works for you or what would work for you and then work towards that. In our decluttering challenge, we actually have something that we call the love tour. And that's exactly what we're doing then. And then we have a process on how to get to your vision. After we ran this challenge for the second time, Vicky and I decided to create an ebook out of it. So now people who prefer to work on their own or at a slower pace, and for those who missed the challenge, they can do it on their own now. And you can purchase this ebook on my website, conigraph.com. We offer it as a convenient PDF download, or there is a link that takes you to Amazon store where you can download it as a Kindle ebook. Okay, let's summarize real quick why I call decluttering an act of self-love. When our environment looks bad, we feel bad. In turn, a clutter-free environment helps us feel less stressed and less overwhelmed. We also don't get sidetracked as easy and we can focus better. Clutter can be a health risk. The dust and the dirt affect the quality of the air and it can also lead to mold and bacteria. A cluttered environment requires more time cleaning, so that means less time for the things we really want to do. And when you have more time for yourself, you can focus on what really matters to you on a deeper level. Clutter clearing is really a tool for self-development. We can find ourselves and figure out who we really are. In short, self-care and self-love are important, but it's so much more than bubble baths, massages and special treats. It's more about creating an environment that supports us in a very practical way brings more ease and freedom and joy in our life. Okay, my friends, that's what I have for you today. I keep these episodes short for you on purpose. What I would love for you to do is put into action what you just heard and discovered on this podcast. My ultimate dream is that you listen to my podcast while you declutter in your home. Remember, a few minutes a day, keep the chaos away. Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast and for listening all the way to the end. Have a beautiful and amazing week and please subscribe so you never miss an episode. See you next time. Take good care. If you enjoyed this podcast episode and you want to go on a journey from chaos to peace in your home, office and finances with me as your guide, Opportunities to work with me one-on-one -on -one are available. Go to conigraph.com, C-O-N-N-Y-G-R-A-F.com to schedule your own personal Clutter to Clarity chat. And we will see if working together is a great fit. That is conigraph.com, C-O-N-N-Y-G-R-A-F.com.